Hey, welcome to Gathcast. I'm Dr. Sanders, and today I thought I would share a little bit different of a video for you guys. Uh, this is me thrifting around Southern California. I recently took a trip down there and just wanted to kind of share my experience with you. And, you know, it's a little bit different, but just trying to test it, see if you guys would like it. Also, if you didn't see, recently I was in a cameo. You know, I had my own little section inside of Sweeney DeVille's review of Domin's album. So I'll leave the link in the description for that for you guys to see. It was very awesome. And of course, it's always great working with Sweeney. Basically, a little bit of background is I decided to take a trip down to Southern California to visit a whole bunch of people. <coughs> and while I was there, I decided to do some thrifting because that's one of my favorite things to do and see what you find. Basically, started with Brian driving me to the airport at like 3.30 a.m., which is... Great. By the way, I also did another episode of the Gothcast podcast. Link in the description as well if you want to hear what Brian's voice sounds like and you know see, you know, all the, our opinions on music. Anyway, if any of the footage in this looks a little blurry or whatever or shaky, I was recorded with a cell phone, just kind of gorilla mode. It was kind of a last-minute sort of video, just kind of putting it together. Uh, if I, if you guys want more, I'll try and do it a little bit differently. But hopefully, you know, you guys enjoy it. Anyway, here it is. It's 3 a.m. And I am getting ready to go to the airport with Brian to fly to Palm Springs. There's my wall. All right, this is the bathroom at the Bellingham Airport. Nice. Spooky bathroom. And as you can see, I got here kind of early. There was hardly any people in the airport, at least in the section where my flight took off. And the flight itself was not that enjoyable. I was extremely tired and uh, yeah, I don't like to fly that much. So here's my flight from Washington to California. As you can tell, it's very fancy. All right, so once I was in California, I decided to do some thrifting. This is a Goodwill in the Coachella Valley. I've been here lots of times. And you could tell they have a lot of dishes. A lot of the stuff you kind of expect in a Goodwill is represented here. Uh, so they have a lot of board games. And this is kind of the media shelves. Lots of VHS and DVDs. And I found Till Tuesday's Everything's Different Now. This was their last album. It's pretty good. Nosferatu VHS, which is awesome. There's actually a version of Nosferatu that has typo negative playing the music, which is really cool found this Misfits shirt, which was, that was awesome. I actually bought this. this. Well, I actually bought most of these things, but yeah. And then Fang Banger, which was a True Blood shirt. You guys remember that show? It's weird to think that True Blood is really old now. Series of Unfortunate Events on VHS. That movie came out in like 2004. So it's kind of weird to think that VHS was still being used as heavily as it was back then. Here's Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Amazing movie. I like I like that cover for it too. I didn't buy that one. I don't know why. Probably because I already have a copy of it, but you know. Twilight, the movie board game. You always see so much Twilight stuff. It's like the worst vampire movie ever made. Uh, here's Wicked, the actual book Wicked. You know, Wizard of Oz. Really good. And then I found these, which are The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and you know, second book, the sequel to it. This is the first editions of the American pressings of these. I was completely shocked by this. I, of course, bought them, but I love, that's my favorite book series of all time is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I was shocked. Uh, this place always has a lot of Stephen King books, so here's the dark half. I have a lot of Stephen King. Here's the Dead Zone, but it's it has the movie poster. It's like a printing to promote the movie. So it was really cool, and it says like eight pages of of movie photos. You know, get a sneak peek. It's a pretty good movie, by the way, with Christopher Walken. Here is a really strange album. It says Monster Mash. Stay tuned, because this record was completely destroyed, pretty much. And I wanted to try and save it, but you can see the, the sleeve is totally split. The album is really dirty and stuff, so stay tuned to see what I did with that. Here's the Jane Fonda workout tape. That's, uh, you know, I had to get that, get fit. Okay, well, 
then here's some more Stephen King. So four past midnight. That actually has a secret window. You know the Johnny Depp movie. That's where that's from. There's a short story in there that is was used as the basis for that film. And of course Gerald's Game and different seasons. I think this was another one of those short story ones. Here's the Conehead soundtrack. And it, look at you got Tainted Love by Soft Cell on there. Isn't that crazy? Here's Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I think this is the one where Bella Lugosi plays Frankenstein. Yeah, it is. But uh, this was a really crazy movie. I have this on DVD, actually. And then, oh, right above it was The Craft. Of course, a lot of people love that film. It's, gosh, that is a video and a half talking about that one. But what a great, what a great movie. Then I went to a Revivals, which is kind of like a local sort of thrift store. And I found this thing, Mind Trap. It's like an audio cassette mystery game. Like you listen to a you know, story and then everybody tries to figure out the crime. Well, I didn't really find anything there. So I went to Angel View, which there's a whole bunch of them. It just sucks because there might've been some good stuff here, but you can see it's all torn up and everything. You know, the records are just a mess and the DVDs and stuff are nice. You know, it's just all thrown around. So it's always disappointing whenever there might be something good, but it's just completely destroyed. So then I went to the thrift store that was like 10 feet away and there's some interesting stuff here. So I had found Psycho 2, which is a great movie actually. In fact, Quentin Tarantino, I think, likes this movie more than the original Psycho. Uh, Replicant starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, it's a movie called Sacrifice. I didn't actually know what this was, but it looked kind of like a horror movie or something. R.I.P. Steve Irwin, we love you. Life Force, this movie's crazy. It's amazing. I think it's Toby Hooper or something, but it's a great, great movie. Scream, of course, a lot of people love that movie. Psycho 3, not not the best Psycho sequel. I, I gotta say, not my favorite. Psycho 2 is really good, though. This is Record Alley in the Palm Desert Westfield Mall. Shopped here for a lot of years. I actually used to work in this mall at some point. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes for, for goth stuff, so I didn't really find anything here. They do have a great selection of t-shirts, always, though. So, love this place. Of course, I found the most goth album ever, Nickelback, Silver Side Up. This is at Barnes & Noble, and I found this Labyrinth comic, which looks pretty cool. I'll have to actually look into that. But then they have the annotated Sandman. It's like these huge volumes of Sandman. And I already have all the volumes of Sandman, but... I would be interested in these, but they're all black and white and the colored versions are so good and they're really expensive. So it would take a lot for me to actually want to get them. Well, then on the second part of my trip, I went to Redlands and did some shopping around there, visited this record store. It is called Redlands Vinyl Records and Collectibles. And they did have a lot of really cool stuff, but they were filming like a movie here or something or like a student film. So I didn't really get a chance to look around all that much. So yeah, but they did have a lot of old film, which is cool. Uh, here's some random alley that has umbrellas, which I'm sure people take a lot of Instagram photos with. Yep. Uh, oh, and here's Redlands Galleria, which is like three stories of thrifting. It's really crazy. Uh, this was Warrior Nun, random comic, but there's a lot of really strange stuff here. And yeah, everything from like little tiny movie posters to VHS to records. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. There is no real theme. It's kind of like people rent out of space like a big flea market. Einstein looks pretty out of it in this rendition. And here's this really weird Bart Simpson thing. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Uh, it's really just creepy looking. Uh, here's some Disney cookie jars. Obviously, Maleficent's awesome and some hand-painted Snow White stuff. I actually had this phone when I was younger. Uh, this one was broken. By the way, this specific model of phone was washing up on a beach in France for like three decades. And they just recently found out that it was from a shipping container that was lost at sea. Gosh, so crazy. And there's some creepy Home Alone Macaulay Culkin stuff. This was really awesome. This was like a dedicated Munsters cabinet. Like somebody had rented out the spot and just had a whole bunch of Munsters memorabilia. And... It was pretty cool. You know, a Von DiCarlo little dedicated thing and some Wolfman and Universal Monsters, but it was really neat. In fact, they had the script from The Monsters' Revenge. Like, that movie's not very good. That's probably one of the worst things with the original cast, but they still had it. And that, that was insane. 
A lot of different signatures, and of course, a little doll. And, oh yeah, this is a Wolf Wolf doll. I'm pretty sure that Butch Patrick makes those. Like, hand makes them. So that's really awesome that it's there. Along with old figures, and yeah, this, this was so cool. After the Redlands Galleria went over to another Goodwill in Redlands. Of course, Twilight. There's like a million issues of Twilight, like every single thrift store ever. Uh, here's some random CDs I found. Look, Cocteau Twins, Treasure, Nine Inch Nails, Pretty Hate Machine. Uh, Nine Inch Nails, Downward Spiral. Th these are awesome. Uh, there's also some random, no doubt. I know people like that band. Oh, I've got to hate these things. The Frank and Thumb. Ugh, hate them. All right, so here's what I did with that Monster Mash record. This album was released in 1977, and the spine is obviously totally split. It's just, yeah, barely holding it together. So I set the record aside. It's covered in dust and grime and all this stuff, but I was going to address the issues with the sleeve first. And I decided to use hot glue for this. I know people are going to criticize whatever I do, no matter what I do. Um, so I kind of used it to tack down like some little reinforcement cardboard on the siding because you know most sleeves have like a little piece in between it to kind of thicken it up laid that down and pressed it down and wait for it to dry just to make sure that it would stay together and then i kind of went in again and then i did the main part of the sleeve you know where it connects on the side i i mean i, went, I was pretty liberal with this i kind of did like one corner to see how it would go and then did the rest of it i just kind of glued it all the way around you know, the side and the top and kind of tested it. And there we go. That's already looking better. By the way, I know I said this album was released inside of 1977. Some places online list is 1973, but I think it's 1977. And the version of Monster Mash on here is not the Bobby Pickett version. It's not even the Boris Karloff or Vincent Price version or anything like that. Uh, it's one, I think, by the band The Shivers. And then the record itself was just absolutely disgusting. So I think I hit this with some, uh, you know, compressed air a little bit just lightly to try and get some of the surface stuff off right away. And then I hit it with an anti-static brush and this helps to get a lot of the different stuff off it. Usually you just hold it against the record and then you move it in towards the little label. But this just had stuff piling up on the brush. I mean, it's so dirty. I don't know if it had ever been cleaned at all. So just trying to get it somewhat better. And it really took a lot of that surface dust off. Uh, and then I hit it with some Groove Glide to lubricate the album. And I was pretty liberal with this just because of the nature of this project. I'm sure no matter what I do, some record person will say, that's totally the incorrect way to do it. You've ruined this completely scratched up record. But honestly, you know, this is a... Maxell static clean. It's supposed to take the static electricity out of records. And my friend Brian gave this to me randomly one year and I've used it for a long time. So basically you set it on the little platform and you hit the button and it spins around the record and supposedly removes the static electricity. And yeah, I mean, I don't know necessarily if it works. I mean, it seems to work, but it's just kind of become a habit of doing these little really beaten up record projects. It doesn't hurt to try everything in the book if you can. And just kind of, woo, spins around. So it has like a little rubber wheel underneath it that spins on the label. It actually isn't very intense. And here's a sample of how it turned out. To my surprise, he did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. He did the mash. It's not perfect, but... I thought it was way better than what it was. So I gave the album a little paper sleeve and, you know, put it back in its home. I also did wipe the album down with like very, very lightly with um, isopropyl alcohol just to kind of get a little film off it. Uh, you got to be really careful with old inks, but I managed to make it work. And you can see this has a special game on the back. So if you want to take part in this game, just pause it for a second, try and work your way through the maze. And I gave the album a nice plastic sleeve after that. And now it'll stay in my collection forever. And, and, you know, it's up to my quality. And I'm happy that I got it to be the quality that it is. Well, that's my trip to California. And I hope you 
enjoyed it, found some interesting things there. Uh, if you want to see some more thrifting videos, just let me know. And, you know, what were some interesting things you found recently while you were thrifting? It's always really crazy because you literally never know what to expect. So, yeah. Anyway, you can like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And, of course, make sure to stay spooky. Where am I going? What's happening? Stay like a the lollipop too. <laughs>